praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God this, this afternoon. God has been so precious, precious to us. We are here this afternoon because he has allowed us to be here. I want us to remember this. Maybe you want a breakthrough in whatever way, whatever situation you're in. I want to encourage you with just one word here. From the book of Exodus, 2nd uh, Chronicles, chapter 20, verse 15, which says, this was Jehazel speaking to Je King Jehoshaphat. He said, listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Many of us who get so discouraged in one way or another because of your relationship, because of the sickness you have. You are battling it, but thinking that you can manage in your own ways, you can't. I know, and uh, without reason or doubt, God is fighting for you. In that state you are in, God is in it with you. And I know the state we are in this nation, it is not for us to think and think and think. We know God is in it. We know one day we shall be together as we used to be in this church. We know one day we shall be set free from this coronavirus. Yeah. And my prayer is, this is not our battle anymore. We need a breakthrough. And this breakthrough will come from the word. Continue reading the word. Continue believing the word and trusting the word. Another yet, another opportunity that God has given us. We want to hear what God has for us. Thank you, servant of God, Bishop, and presiding Bishop. We welcome you to come and speak to the viewers. We are ready to listen and we are ready to take the word seriously. It's yet a wonderful morning, and particularly afternoon, because it's after 12, that God has given us another opportunity. I'll call it a powerful opportunity to assemble uh, together in our various homes, wherever we are, to listen to the word of God. Because man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that cometh from the mouth of God. We have actually discovered that it's not bread that keeps us around. It's not the political setup that keeps us around. It's not the, the economic and financial power that keeps us around, but the word of God. Amen? Amen. So this morning, I will, uh, this afternoon, I shouldn't be too long. I just want us to go straight to the word of God. And uh, for the viewers that are watching this morning, I want to encourage you to keep on tuning in uh, on our Facebook handle and uh, be watching every Sunday as we start the morning service we have uh, preceding preachers that come before me and uh, we thank God for the ministry that God has bestowed upon this church reach out to many millions and thousands of people out there now today morning I like to preach on the message lifting up Christ in the midst of challenges let me come again. Lifting up Christ in the midst of challenges. We get that from the book of John 3, 14 to 15. But our message comes from the book of uh, Numbers 21, 4 to 9. The book of Numbers in the Old Testament, in the book, uh, from uh, chapter 21, verse 4 to 9. I read, 
I quote the scripture, it quotes. They traveled from Mount Hor along the road to the Red Sea. Verse, uh, uh, and it says, to go around Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. You know, it sounds quite familiar. Coronavirus has been with us since March. But in the world, it began somewhere around December, so they say, from China. So people are getting wary. They are getting impatient. And let's listen to what happened to the children of Israel. After God brought them from Egypt, crossed the Red Sea, and they were in the wilderness for 40 years. That journey became a troublesome journey. They became wary. They became troubled. Anxiety crept in. Stress crept in. Fear crept in. They began becoming a little bit impatient. The Bible says the people grew impatient on the way. In verse, uh, verse 5 says, they spoke against God and against Moses and said, why have you brought us up out of Egypt to the, out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There is no bread, there is no water, and we detest this miserable food. <laughs> they were saying, you brought us into a land of trouble. In this very wilderness that we are in, and we recall your words, that God sent you to bring us to the land that is flowing with milk and honey. A land that we shall eat and be satisfied. Now, we were wondering, how come that whatever you promise us doesn't seem to have come to pass? A lot of us are getting weary now. We are getting tired. Some of us have even stopped watching the announcement every three o'clock or four o'clock. Doesn't sound very good. Every time we hear about Mutai Kagwe this year, the cabinet secretary of health announcing, it's just another day of increased numbers. The numbers are soaring. The disease is catching up many. Many are dying. The government seems to be confused. People are getting impatient. Business are closing down. Families are getting troubled. People are getting depressed. Cases of hanging of people committing suicides are on the increase. Domestic violences are coming in more. People are getting weary. They are getting tired. It's a new normal to our lives. We're not used to this kind of arrangement. So it was a similar situation. The children of Israel, after working for 30, 40 years, through the wilderness, they became weary, they became tired, and they began questioning God. At this point, the Bible says, they spoke against God and against Moses. And said, why have you brought us here out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There's no bread, there's no water, and we are, we, we are, we are detesting this miserable condition. In verse, nine, verse 6 says, Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They beat the people and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, verse 7, We, we sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it up on the pole. And anyone who is bitten and looks up to it shall live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it on the pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked up to the bronze snake, they lived. Praise the living God. Now, this scripture sounds very familiar to the current situation that many of us are following through. We're getting weary. This is a new normal. 
We're not used to this kind of being locked into homes. We've lost jobs. We've lost the very source of our sustainability. Things are going out of hands. The landlords are on our back. No more food, what we used to call normal is no longer normal. You can mingle around. You can't come to church for fellowship. Neither can you come out of Nairobi. Neither can you go out, out of your house after nine. It is a miserable situation that is causing many of us to get in trouble. But let me tell you something. In this misery, in this depression, in this disturbing situation, let us not raise our finger against God. Because many of us are doing that through our talks, through our ways of conduct and behavior. We've turned around and began questioning God. If you are indeed God that liveth in the heavens, if you are indeed God that takes control and charge of the world today, why have you left, left us to suffer this much? You've ravaged our economies. You've ravaged our way of life. You've caused distress into homes. Aren't you there, God? Can't you listen unto us? That is the very situation that many of us have gone into. The same situation that the children of Israel were. They questioned Moses. Many of them, when Moses spoke to, the, to Pharaoh and began the journey of the Egypt, they were so excited. Many of you will remember the very first time you got saved. It was excitement. You had been born again. You are now living a new life. You felt like you want to fly up. But not too long, you find yourself in the dry land of the Christian life. Where you're facing situations that are hard and beyond your control. You don't know what to do next. Life is standing against you. Your wife is standing against you. Your husband is standing against you. Your employer has told you we have no money, we cannot keep you into employment. Things are out of hand. So these people began complaining. They began grappling. Sounds familiar to any of us when we grow up against God. When we go through situations that are so hard and difficult. But let me tell you today. When God realized that they had messed up. The Bible says that he released the venom, snakes. He began judging them. And the world today. I believe coronavirus has come to judge the world. Because not anybody expected this. And not in the history of man have ever had such a serious phenomenon that has caused distress. When you read history, you hear about plagues. We hear about many things, the Spanish plague and many others. And today we are going through a scenario that is causing trouble to the world. And God is judging us because many of us had forgotten God. Many preachers had gone into business. Many countries believed in the economic power. But God has brought this small virus which is causing trouble across the world. But one thing that I know about the children of Israel is that they came back to themselves. The time of realization is now when we need to come back to our Mecca. It's not the medical scheme that we have that will help us out. It is not the medical practitioners that will help us out. Even them are exposed to the same danger like us. They are dealing with a phenomenon that is beyond their control. The children of Israel realized that and came back. And the Bible says that in the scripture that I've just read, they realized that they have sinned against God and against Moses. It's time for us to realize as a world, wherever we are, we've sinned against God and for us to come back to him. When they came to that recognition, that realization, which is very crucial for all of us today, that when we speak against God in our works, when we do things that are not in tandem with the Lord of God, when we behave contrary to the scriptures of God, and God's presence leaves us, and we find ourselves in a predicament of this size, it is time for us to call upon our maker. The children of Israel called upon Moses and said, We have sinned against God. We have sinned against you. 
may God forgive us we come unto him he says I quote the scripture he says this the Lord said Moses make before then they said the people came to Moses and said we have sinned when we spoke against you the Lord and against you Moses pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us and Moses prayed it's important for us to remember that when God speaks to us he does it and he does it in a different way when he spoke the Bible says Moses made a bronze snake he gave a solution can I tell you today there is a solution in your problems there's an answer to coronavirus today when they recognize the problem and the venomous storm the snakes were biting the children of Israel the Bible says many of them died indeed the coronavirus has taken the lives of many when you look at the statistics across the globe thousands of millions and billions of people have lost there's no world war either the first world war or the second world war that many people perished as it is today but I'm glad to tell you today that in that scenario in that confusion when Moses realized that they had repented and come back to God more God spoke to Moses and told him make a bronze snake amen, amen. and put it on a pole raise it in the wilderness the he that is beaten when he raises his eyes and turns to the bronze he shall live I love that that anybody was beaten all you needed to do is raise up your eyes unto the bronze snake and immediately you restore your life back and the book of John says the book of John chapter 3 verse 14 to 15 says as Moses raised the bronze snake in the wilderness and he that raised his eyes to look at it lived so the, shall, so the same shall be the son of man today my brothers lift up your eyes unto the son of man raise up your eyes unto Jesus that in the condition you are in today raise your eyes unto Jesus who is the author and finisher of our salvation amen are you distressed in your financial situation brother that is being beaten by a snake raise your eyes unto the Lord are you having trouble in your family raise your eyes unto the maker that he that raises his eyes to the Jesus Christ as it were those that raised their eyes and looked at the snake in the wilderness they lived my brothers and sisters today the snake in the form of the coronavirus COVID-19 is biting families across the border because you don't know who has it and who doesn't have it it's an airborne disease it is spread through droplets it survives 24 hours and you don't know what you've touched and what you have not touched but let me tell you the moment you feel uncomfortable my sister raise your eyes unto Jesus Christ and I want to tell you today to those that are listening to me today it doesn't matter where you are it doesn't matter the situation you are in today it doesn't matter whom you mingle with yesterday or today Jesus is in charge of our lives in the book of Job when the devil inflicted when Satan inflicted body harm body infliction in the body of Job the wife turned unto Job and said why don't you cast God and live many of us are in that situation today we feel like we want to cast God and live but today I want to tell you let's raise up our eyes unto him remember he's still in church whether it's corona or no corona Jesus is still in church he's still in control he is the Lord of the lords and I want to tell you my brothers that are listening to me today God will give you a new lease of life 
you, God will, live, will let you live longer. For many years, you are going to see your grandchildren. Don't put your mind and heart on Corona. It is something that is going to live with us. But never will it come to your homestead. When God was releasing the Israelites out of Egypt, he told them, paint the doors with blood. That when the angel of death comes, he shall pass over. The disease shall pass over. When the angel of death comes in the in form of coronavirus, when he sees your door with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, it shall pass over. None of you shall die because of coronavirus. And I'm speaking to you today. None of you shall be hopelessized because of coronavirus. And I'm speaking this not from my own mind, but from the book, from the Bible, that when the snake beat them, those that raise up their eyes unto the, unto the bronze serpent, didn't die, but lived. Equally the same today. Raise your eyes unto him, and you shall live. May God help us today to lift up Christ in the midst of crisis. In the midst of trouble, our Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. The world will change. The dynamics in the world will change. But Jesus will never, he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. What you are seeing today, as the book of Solomon say, there's nothing new on the face of that. You are talking about coronavirus. Probably in the years, 2,000 years ago, it was something else. But similar to corona. But it doesn't change the substance, the content, and the power of the word of God. God remains supreme. He remains powerful. He remains in charge. He is the creator of heaven and earth. And he is our Lord. In him, we have trust and faith in him so brother be comfortable thank him in everything that you do give thanks unto god give praise unto him that even in this condition we shall survive even with the red sea we shall go across it and we shall be the other side even in the wilderness that we are in today we shall see the land that god promised us that is flowing with milk and honey god bless you mightily as you wait upon him at these times and conditions. I pray for God's blessings upon each one of you. I declare, I declare success upon each one of you. I declare growth upon each one of you. I declare healing upon each one of you today. May God give you peace and joy and sustain your life. Let sustainability and blessings be part of your portion. May God bless you mightily for this word that I've, we've spoken today. Lift up your eyes to Jesus. As Moses raised up the bronze serpent in the wilderness, so, that, so shall be the Son of Man who shall be raised upon. That when you raise your eyes unto him, you shall receive your healing. God bless you mightily. Look forward to meeting you again. Look forward to ministering to you next Sunday as you continue looking upon the Lord and trust him in all situations, in all conditions. Let him guide you, guide your life, walk with you at every stage. May his blessings be upon all of you. Now we'll stand up to give our offerings and uh, before that I want to pray. Just close your eyes for those that are in the homes. You might be having a need. You might be going through a terrible situation now. You might be crying and shedding tears on your bed. You have no source of sustainability. Things are getting out of hand. I want you to put your hand on your chest as we pray together, wherever you are. And when God meets your need, when God touches you, please remember to give a testimony. Remember to speak out the goodness of the Lord. Mighty Father, I want to remember that sister. 
I want, Lord, I want to pray for that mother. I want to pray for that brother, whatever he is. The Lord, you'll touch them. Lord, in this condition that they're in, it might be the situation like the children of Israel, where the snakes were all over, biting people and dying, like the coronavirus that is hitting every home, every family, every nation. But people have forgotten that they, can, they need to turn to you and raise up their eyes unto you. Touch that brother, touch that sister. They raise up their hands unto you. Father, you will touch them. They shall live. They shall get their peace. They shall get their joy. They shall get their breakthrough. And I pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall stand up and raise the Buddha, take our bring in our offerings and uh, we close the service father thank you for those that are going to give the offerings bless them and uh, provide for them oh god even during this difficult time in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen may god bless you mightily looking forward again to ministering to you next sunday and the subsequent sundays from there god bless you i believe you have been uh, blessed and we will continue blessing you God bless you mightly. Amen.